de nardos. El niño la mira mira, el niño la está mirando. En el aire conmovido mueve la luna sus brazos y enseña, lúbrica y pura, sus senos de duro estaño. Oye, luna, 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 si vinieran los gitanos, harían con tu corazón collares y anillos blancos. Niño, déjame que vaya. Cuando vengan los gitanos, te encontrarán sobre el yunque, con los ojillos cerrados. Oye, luna, 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 ¿qué ya siento sus caballos? Niño, déjame, no pises mi blancora ni mi El jinete se acercaba tocando el tambor del llano, 
Dentro de la fragua el niño tiene los ojos cerrados. Por el olivar venían bronce y sueño los gitanos, las cabezas levantadas y los ojos entornados. Como canta la fumaya, ay, como canta en el árbol, por el cielo va la luna, con el niño de la mano. Dentro de la fragua lloran, dando gritos los gitanos. El aire la ve la bella, el aire la está is right inside my temples. Mm. They have been tolling for more than two hours now. Priests have come from all the villages. The church looks beautiful. During the first response, Magdalena fainted. She's the one who will be the most alone. The only one who loves her father. I. Thank God we are alone for a little while, because I have come to eat. <laughs> if Bernarda were to see you. Mm. Since she's not eating, she wants us all to starve to death. So bossy, so domineering. Well, she can go to hell, because I have opened her sausage jar. Alfonsia, why don't you give me some for my little girl? Go right ahead and take a fistful of chickpeas while you're at it. She won't notice a thing today. Bernardo! Mm. The old woman, <laughs> is she locked up properly? With two turns of the key. You should put the bar across as well. Her fingers are like five pick locks. Bernardo! She's coming! Yeah. Clean everything carefully. If Bernarda doesn't see everything shining here, she'll pull out what little hair I've got left. I that woman, a tyrant of all who surround her. She is capable of sitting on your heart and watching you die for a year and still not wipe that cold smile from her damn face. Clean, clean those dishes. My hands are blood raw from all the scrubbing. She is the cleanest. Ella la más decente, the most decent. Y a la más superior, the most superior of beings. A good rest her poor husband has earned himself. Have all the relatives come? Only those on her side of the family. His people hate her. They came to make sure he was dead and bless him. Are there enough chairs? See more than enough. Let them sit on the floor. Since Bernarda's father died, no one has set foot on this end or this roof. She doesn't want anyone to see her in her own domain. Damn her to hell. She's always been good for Three you. years of washing her sheets. Treinta años. Thirty years of eating her scraps. Sleepless nights while she's had a cough. Whole day spying on the neighbors through the window slits that I can bring her all that gossip. A life without secrets, one from the other. Still, I say, que se fastidious. I'd like to stick a burning nail in her eye. Head! Oh, but I am a good bitch. I bark when I'm told. And I bite the heels of those who come begging at our door when she sets me upon them. My sons work in her fields. They're both married now. But one day, I will have enough. Yes, Elia. And on that day, I will lock myself up in a room with her and spit on her for an entire year. <laughs> Bernarda, for this, too. For that, too. And for the other thing, too. <laughs> I will spit on her until she looks like a lizard that one of the children have squashed. Because that's what she is, a lizard. 
she and her entire family. Not that I envy the life she leads. She has five girls on her hands, five ugly daughters, feas. And only the eldest, Angustias, has any money to her name because she's her first husband's daughter. The rest of them have lots of fine lace and linen camisoles, but only bread and water is their inheritance. <laughs> what I would have given to have what they have. All we have are our hands and a hole in the land of truth. And that's the only land those who have nothing are allowed to inherit. There are still spots on these glasses. <laughs> Not even with soap or a rag will they come off. <laughs> oh, that's the last prayer. I'm going to go hear it. I love how the priest sings. In the Paternoster, his voice went up and up and up like a pitcher being filled with water. Of course, in the end, it cracked unbearably, but it was glorious listening to him. Mind you, there was no one like the old sacristan, Tronchipinos. He, he sang my mother's mass, God rest her soul. When he sang, the walls would shake. And when he said amen, it was as if a wolf had entered the church. Amen. <laughs> You're going to strain your windpipe. Oh, well, I'd like to strain something else. <laughs> Ding, ding, dong. Ding, ding, dong. May God forgive him. Praise be to God. Ding, ding, dong. May he wait for us many years from now. Ding, ding, dong. Praise be to God. Now and forever. I've come for the leftovers. That doorway leads to the road. Today's scrubs are for me. Blue hair. You have someone to take care of you, and my little girl and I are all alone. So are the dogs, and they survive just fine. They always give me the scraps. Get out of here! Who's that you good at the... Look at the footprints you made with your daddy feet. Floors. Covers. Pedestals. Iron bed frames all polished with oil. While those of us who live in mud huts with just a spoon and a plate to our name have to swallow the bitter pill. I pray for the day there's none of us left to tell the tale. Your bed. 
Do you hear me? Have you begun the work of the season? Yesterday. The sun beats down like lead. It's been years since it's been this hot. Is the lemonade ready? See that time. Give some to the men. They are already drinking in the courtyard. See that they don't come through here. I don't want them coming this way. Pemeo Romano I was with the mourners. There he was. His mother was there. She saw his mother. Neither she nor I saw Pepe. It looks like him. <laughs> the one who was there was the widower from Darahali, very close to your aunt. We all saw him. Wicked woman. Worse than wicked. A tongue like a knife. Women in church should not look at any other man except for the priest, and him only because he wears a skirt. <laughs> Those who look elsewhere seek the warmth of a pair of trousers. Dried up old lizard. Gnarly woman aching for a man's heat. Praise be to God. Praise, Praise and blessed be he forever. Rest in peace with the heavenly host above you. Rest, Rest in peace with Saint Michael the Archangel and his sword of justice. Rest in peace with the key that opens everything and the hand that closes all. Rest in peace with those that are blessed and the little lights of the field. Rest in peace. With our holy charity and the souls on land and sea. Rest in peace. Grant peace to your servant, Antonio Maria Benavides, and give him the crown of your blessed glory. Amen. Requiem atenum dona heis domine, Jesus perpetua luce amis. Health to pray for his soul. May you never want for a loaf of bread, nor a roof for your daughters. May you continue to enjoy the weeds of your marriage. From the men, this bag of money for prayers. Thank them and pour them a glass of brandy. Run back to your caves and criticize everything you have seen. May many years pass before you cross my threshold again. You can't complain. The whole village came. Yeah, to fill my house with the sweat of their underskirts and the venom of their tongue. Only way to speak when one lives in a cursed village without a river, a town of wells, where one is always drinking water with the fear that it might be poisoned. Oh, look what they've done to the floors. As if a herd of goats had walked across it. Child, give me the fan. Take this one. Is this the kind of fan one hands a widow? Hand me a black one and learn to respect the mourning of your father. Take mine. And you? I'm not hot. Then find another one. They're going to need it. In the eight years this morning will last, not a breeze from the street will enter this house. Imagine we have sealed up the doors and windows with bricks. That's how it was in my father's house, and in my grandfather's too. In the meantime, you can embroider your trousseaus. I have 20 pieces of linen in the chest, so you can cut out sheets and veils. Magdalena can embroider those. It's all the same to me. If you don't want to embroider them, they'll go without embroidery. That way, yours will look much better. Neither mine nor yours. I know I'll never marry. I'd rather carry sacks to the mill, anything but sit here day after day in this dark room. That's what it is to be a woman. Cursed be all women. Here, you will do what I say. No more telling tales to your father. Whip and a mule for men, needle and thread for women. That's the way it is for people who are born with means. Can I not let me out? Let her out already. It was a struggle for me to keep her down. Although she's 80, your mother is as strong as an oak tree. <laughs> Runs in the family. My grandfather was the same. Several times, while the mourners were still here, I had to guide her with an 
empty sack. She kept wanting to call out to you so you could give her at least dish water to drink and dog meat, which she says is what you give to her. She's a troublemaker. She can let off stream in the courtyard. She has taken out her amethyst earrings and her fine rings out of the jewelry box and has put them on and she says she wants to get married. <laughs> go with her. Make sure she doesn't go near the well. From that spot, the neighbors can see her from their windows. We are going to change. See, but not your headscarves. And Angustias? I saw her peeping through the slits in the main gate. The men have just left. And what were you doing at the gate? I wanted to see if the heads had laid. And the men in mourning had just left? There was a group still standing outside. Angustias! Angustias! What do you need? What and who are you looking at? No one. Is it proper for a woman of your class to be throwing a fish hook to a man on the day of her father's funeral? To me, who are you looking at? Yo, I... See, do! No one! You spider serpent creature! Ignore the comic day! Out! She did it without thinking, which obviously is wrong. I was surprised to see her sneaking out to the courtyard. And then she stood behind the window listening to the conversations of the men, which is, as always, not fit to hear. That's what they come to funerals for. What were they talking about? <laughs> they were talking about Paca La Lucetta. Last night, they tied her husband to the manger and took her up to the top of the olive grove. Aya? She? So willing. They say she went with her breasts exposed, and Maximiliano was holding her tight as if he was strumming a guitar. Okay, or or. <laughs> and what happened? <laughs> what had to happen? They returned around daybreak. Pacalaro said that had her hair down and a crown of flowers on her head. She is the only loose woman in our village. That's because she's not from here. She is from far away. And the men who went with her are sons of foreigners as well. The men from here men aren't capable of such a thing. No, but they like to look at it and talk about it. And they suck their fingers so these things happen. They were saying lots of other things, too. What things? I'm ashamed to mention them. And my daughter heard them? Claro, of course. Oh, she takes after her aunts, white and dripping with sweat and making goo-goo eyes at any common barber's least bit of flattery. Oh, how we have to suffer and struggle to make sure people behave decently and that they don't run wild. Well, your daughters are old enough to deserve such things. They give you very little grief. Angustias must be well over 30 by now. 39, to be exact. <laughs> Imagine. And she's never had a suitor. No, none of them has ever had a suitor. Nor have they need of one. They do just fine as they are. I've heard though, and I did not mean to offend you. There isn't anyone for a hundred miles around that can compare to them. The men around here are not of their class. Would you have me offer them to just any field hand? Well, you could have gone to another village. To sell them. Oh, yes. No, Bernarda, for a change. Although somewhere else they would be considered the poor ones. Hold your tormenty tongue! Oh, there's no reasoning with you. Do we or do we not confide in one another? We do not. You serve me and I pay you. Nothing more. Don Arturo is here. He has come to discuss the terms of the will. Fine. Start whitewashing the court. Go put all the clothes of the deceased in the big chest. We could give away some of the things. Nada. Not one button. Not even the handkerchief with which we covered his face. Have you taken your medicine? For the good it will do me. But you have taken it. I do things without believing in them. But I do them anyway, like clockwork. 
Since the new doctor came, you seem a little bit livelier. I feel the same. Did you notice? Adelaida wasn't at the funeral. I already knew. Her fiancé won't even let her near the doorway of the house. She used to be happy. Now not even powder does she put on her face. It's hard to know anymore if it's worth having a fiancé or not. It's all the same. All of this I blame on gossip that doesn't let us live. Adelaida must have had a bad time. She is terrified of our mother. Every time she comes here, mother sticks the knife right in. She's the only one who knows about her father and how he got his land. In Cuba, he killed his first wife's husband in order to marry her. Then, when they got here, he abandoned her and went off with another woman who had a daughter. Then he had an affair with the girl, Adelaida's mother. Then he married her after his second wife had gone mad and died. And that villain? Why isn't he in jail? Because men cover for each other when it comes to things of that nature, and no one can betray the other. But Adelaida's not to blame for that. No, but history repeats itself. And I know that everything is just one horrible, repetitive cycle. Her fate is the same as her mother's and her grandmother's, each one wife to the man who fathered her. What a terrible thing. It's best not to talk to a man, ever. Since childhood, I've been afraid of them. I used to see them in the stable yard, yoking the oxen, lifting in their sacks of wheat, stomping their feet and shouting. That's wheat. I was always afraid to one day find myself suddenly grown up and embraced by them. Anyway, that has made me weak and ugly and has kept them away from me forever. Don't say such things. Enrico Manas was after you once. And that Make up stories. Once I stood in my nightgown and waited at my window until dawn because he sent word with his farmhand's daughter that he'd stop by, but he never did. It was all just talk. Then he married a girl with more money than I. And ugly as the devil. What do they care about ugliness? All they care about are land, oxen, and a submissive bitch to feed them. <laughs> what are you doing? Just here. And you? Oh, just running through the bedrooms to stretch my legs a bit. I was looking at the paintings that grandmother used to embroider on canvas. You know, the little poodle, the black man fighting the lion. All the ones we used to love as children. <laughs> that was a happier time. Weddings would last for ten days and wicked tongues weren't in fashion. Today everything's more refined. Brides wear white veils like they do in the big cities. We drink bottled wine, but we rot inside to think of what others might say about us. God only knows what went on in those days. Your shoelace is undone. Ah, what of it? You step on it and fall. One less. <laughs> and Adela? I. <laughs> she put on the green dress that I made for her birthday, ran out to the stable yard, and started to shout, Hens, hens, look at me! <laughs> I had to laugh. If my mother sees her, pobre, poor girl. She is the youngest of us all and filled with hope. I'd give anything to see her happy. Uh, KRF, what time is it? Must be 12 by now. Damn late? It's about to strike. Have you heard the latest? No. Come on. I don't know what you're talking about. You two know more than I. You're always together, head to head like little sheep. But you never tell anybody anything. About Pepe El Romano? Ah, ah. It's the talk of the town. Pepe El Romano is to marry Angustias. He was outside the house last night. And I think soon he'll be sending someone to ask for her hand. Well, I'm glad. He's a good lad. Me too. Angustias has some fine qualities. <laughs> Neither one of you is glad. <gasps> Magdalena, who here? If he were to come for Angustias, for Angustias, the woman, I would be glad. But 
he's only here for her money. Angustias is our sister, but we're all family. We know that she is old and ailing and has always been the one amongst us with the least amount to offer as a woman. If she looked like a broomstick wrapped in a dress when she was 20, what must she look like now that she's 40? Don't speak like that. <laughs> Love comes to the one who least expects it. After all, she's telling the truth. Angustias has her father's money. She's the only rich one in the house. And now that our father has died and his state is being shared out, they're after her. Pepe El Romano is 25 years old and the handsomest man for miles around. The natural thing would be for him to be courting you, Amelia, or Adela, since she's only 20. Not to be going after the darkest thing in this house. <laughs> A woman who, like her father, talks through her news. Well, maybe he likes her. I could never stand your hypocrisy, so help me God. <laughs> <laughs> Have the hens seen you yet? And what did you want me to do? If our mother sees you, she'll drag you by the hair. But I was so delighted with, with, the, with the dress. I was planning to wear it the day we go eat watermelons by their water wheel. There wouldn't have been another one like it. It is a lovely dress. And it becomes me. It's the best thing Magdalena has ever made. <laughs> and the hens, what did they say to you? They gave me some of their fleas that covered my legs with bites. <laughs> what you can do is dye it black. Ah, the best thing she can do is give it to Angustias for her wedding to Pepe El Romano. Pero, mm. but Pepe El Romano? Haven't you heard? No. Well, now you know. But it was possible. Money makes anything possible. <laughs> so that's why she followed the mortars out and was looking through the gates? That man is capable of. He is capable of anything. What are you thinking, Adela? I'm thinking this time of mourning has come at the worst possible time in my life. You'll grow accustomed to it. No! I will not grow accustomed to it. I don't want to be caged in. I don't want my skin to become like yours. I don't want to lose my pallor in these rooms. Tomorrow, I will wear my green dress and I will go for a walk down the street. I want to go out! Poor thing, how she misses her father. <laughs> <laughs> What will be for one will be for all. The servant almost heard you. Pepe El Romano is at the top of the street. Let's go see him. <laughs> Aren't you going? As if I care. When he turns the corner, you can see him better from the window in your room. <laughs> Damn the will. So much See? Money. And for the others, quite a bit less. You told me that three times already, and I've chosen not to answer you. Quite a lot less. Much less. Don't remind Again. me. Again. Angustias! Madre? You have the nerve to powder your face? You dare to wash your face on the day of your father's funeral? He was not my father. Mine died a long time ago. Do you no longer remember him? You owe more to this man, the father of your sisters, than your own father. Thanks to this man, you have an abundant fortune. That remains to be seen. If only for decency's sake. Out of respect! Madre, let me go out! Go out! Not until I scrub that powder off your face! You're the feeble hypocrite! Mirror image of your aunt! Granada, don't meddle so much. My mother may be crazy, but I have my five senses intact. I know exactly what I'm doing. What's happening? Nothing's happening. If you're arguing about the inheritance, you're already the richest one here. You can keep it all. Stick your tongue in your hole. Don't you think you can get the better of me? Until I leave this house feast feet first, I will control my own affairs and yours. I can't find it. Let me go. You're not the best my Manchia. I don't want anything of mine to belong to any of you. Not my rings, 
nor my black Maureen dress, because none of you will get married, not one. Bernarda, give me my pearl choker. Why did you let her out? She got away from me. I got away from her because I want to get married. Because I want to get married to a handsome man from the sea. Because men from here run away from women. I am still Madre. No! No, I won't be quiet. I don't want to see these unmarried women foaming at the mouth for a wedding, letting their hearts turn to dust. I want to go back to my village. Bernarda, I want a man to marry, to be happy with. Lock her up. Let me go out, Bernarda.